David Zeritsky from The Bond Experience. Joe Darlington from Being James Bond. We are back. Now, if you remember from our last one where we took uh, the very first Sean Connery movie, Dr. No, and started to analyze it because this came up in a conversation on the way down to Washington. Mm -hmm. We started to really analyze, are the very first Bond films of the different actors the best Bond film that they've been in? Mm -hmm. And we found out that Dr. No was probably not Sean Connery's best. Right, exactly. We walked away from that. But as you can <laughs> see right now, we are in front of On Her Majesty's Secret Service. We are. We Who, are. Who's, whose first Bond movie is that? <laughs> that was Mr. George Lazenby. Isn't that someone you had breakfast with or something like that? Or maybe, <laughs> maybe even drinks at night or something? Sure did. Sure did. He is a character, boy. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> he, he, what a personality. Yes. Right? I mean. Yeah. He, he, he is a guy. You never have to wonder what he's like when the camera's off. And that's just him. He, he, he no is the filter. same guy. Not at all. No filter Not whatsoever. Not at all. He'll, he'll say the same thing in front of a thousand people as he will just you and him. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, you, please, let's start off by talking about Honor Majesty's uh, Secret Service. have to uh, really ask an interesting question because I find that this film has really grown in popularity, mm -hmm. especially in the Bond community. Yeah. Did you always like this film? The first time you saw it, were you like, love it? Yes. I literally Why? Did. Uh, it, it was funny. I can remember it was right when I was probably in either in high school or just graduated and my friend Scott, who I do my reviews with, by mm -hmm. the way, uh, you know, we were talking and I was really getting the Bond bug. You know, of course, this was the days of Fear Eyes Only and Octopus. You know, I was really starting right. to get the bug. And he says, have you seen Honor Majesty's Secret Service? And I said, no. And I and I'm like, was Roger Moore in that? He's just, no, he, he, so he we literally he just put it on. We watched. Yeah. This is the days of Laserdisc, by the way. Um, we put. I was hooked right out of the gate. I really was. I and I can't tell you. The, I all I remember is. I mean, the score yeah. stuck with me. Even the which we probably look back on now and sort of take for granted, but that bobsled scene. Yeah. Everything that was great. Like, like it was, and it was awesome because. It was an action moment that you and I could probably have, literally. Right, right. You know, I mean, it was not like this over-the-top crazy thing. Yes. The ski chases were amazing. The score with it was amazing. The bobsled. The romance was second to none. I mean, it was the first time you saw a Bond movie with an, a genuine romance. Yep. And it was, like, kind of unheard of. Yeah. And, wow, did that resonate. It's it's amazing too because um, I'm going to kind of blow you away. So and and this is this is like a point counterpoint type thing, and it should yeah. be because otherwise, if we're in agreement with each other right. for like 40 <laughs> minutes, you're going to yeah. fall asleep. Um, first time I saw Honor Majesty's Secret Service from beginning to end. Now I had grown up with Bond, so I saw excerpts on TV and things like that. Beginning to end was 1997 mm -hmm. when I got back into Bond. I had seen Tomorrow Never Dies and it blew me away mm -hmm. and it got me back into Bond in a big way in the Bond yeah. lifestyle. And I'm like, I'm going to see all the movies. Uh -huh. I'm going to get the VHSs. Remember those? <laughs> um, and I remember very specifically um, watching it and I didn't like it. And I'll tell you why I didn't like it. It was George. It was, for some reason, I felt that was not the performance of my Bond. Now, mm -hmm. I will tell you, Looking back on it, my views have changed, and I'll get into that in a second. Mm -hmm. But I was coming off of Brosnan, you know, who looks like a model, but doesn't act like a model. I yeah. mean, he's got this, like, swarthiness, this charm. Mm -hmm. um, he's, he's just really, I thought, that was Bond for me. That bothered me, but I was really conflicted mm -hmm. because I knew it was an amazing Bond film. Because at the same time of watching the movies, what I would do is I would read the book. Yeah. And oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. out of any movie ever made Bond related, mm -hmm. this thing follows the book. It's like the script is right there. Literally, yeah. It, it, right, I mean, it, it is almost, I'll even do you one better. Yeah. Not only, it is it is so faithful to the book, where you read the book and you just feel like it's a novelization of a movie you just saw. Yes. You know, I mean, it is, it is eerily just spot on perfect. This film actually takes a liberty with the book that I think improves on it. Which is, I don't know if you, if you remember this, the end where he has escaped his Gloria. Right. He's met up with Tracy. They've escaped yeah. together. Well, in the novel, he just leaves her at a hotel and says, you stay here and I'm going to go get the bad guy. The film takes it up a notch where they kidnap her right. and they bring her to Piz Gloria. So that adds a level of, of tension. I had forgotten that. That's great. You know, and again, it's like normally I'd be like, stick with the book, stick with the book. Don't mess with the books. Just stick with the book. Yeah. 
they they really did improve upon it with that. So yeah, not only do they do the novel perfectly, but they actually do it even. It's almost like even Ian Fleming didn't know how good it could be. Yeah, and, and it's a good point because what I think this film did so well is um, you know take take George's acting or mm -hmm. persona of Bond aside, it surrounded everything else with those perfect, beautiful Bond moments that we even talked in Doctor No of like uh, first of all, it's amazing looking. The yeah. whole film, the color, the environments. Mm. I mean, to me, it's my favorite yeah. James Bond location. Everybody's like, you know, what's your favorite James Bond location? Mm -hmm. It's Switzerland. Yeah. It's Piz Gloria. Yeah. It's got to be. It takes these amazing locations that are very Bond-like. It gives you an amazing Bond score. I mean, arguably, one of the best Bond scores Magnificent. Absolutely magnificent. Ever. Yeah. And then it also puts Bond in Bond situations. And I know that's like every, everybody out there is going to be going like, duh, what does that mean? This movie is about Bond. Mm -hmm. It's not, yeah. oh, it's the bad guy story. Oh, it's the Bond girl story. They happen to be cohorts mm -hmm. in his journey. This yeah. is his journey. Sure. Right. And it, he needs, he utilizes his own skills. There's no Bond gadgets except for maybe like the little clicky camera and yeah. maybe the, the, the old, old timey Xerox machine, back then, which yeah, that's is like true. high tech for that time. Uh, yeah, I mean, th th it's so, it is Bond with his skills and instincts to get yes. himself out of situations. A uh, perfect example of that, one of my favorite parts of the film, it's not what you, anybody would think, it's probably nobody else's favorite part, when he takes his pockets inside out, yeah. right? <laughs> and he uses it to grip on, yeah. come on! Totally. That's such a, because yes. I even like when Connery and Dr. No uses a hair to see if yes. anybody's broken into his closet. Right. Simplicity, and I, mm -hmm. I hope. You know the, the wonderful Bond producers out there are looking at that. It's these simple moments in the yeah. Bond films that connect with us, yeah. not a, an invisible vanquish. <laughs> right. I'm just saying. Yeah. Right. Just saying. I, I would agree with that. I think a lot of people would. You, you know, let's. You know, you mentioned George's performance, and I. You know, that is one of the things. I think that really does sort of make it or break it for a lot of people. Mm. I think a lot of people will watch that film and just basically watch George, and they say, either. They connect or they don't. He, right. He's and in fact, he's he. It's the kind of film, and he's probably the kind of person. Either you like that or you don't. Right. It's really weird because I I've watched that film many times, and I I feel like I've noticed he does seem like a kid who's sort of living a dream. Hmm. You know, he kind of walks like I kind of find that he smiles too much. Like he's. It's almost like. It's a self-satisfaction, which right. works for James Bond, but is it the kind of self, like, is it too much self-satisfaction? Like, again, he's a, he's a kid in his 20s doing James Bond. Interesting. You know, so it's, it's almost like that kind of arrogance that he has, that it, that, that it, he needed that arrogance to get the role, frankly. Right. I mean, who else would have the stones to barge your way into a director's office, make up a line of BS to get your dream role? You got to give... You got to give it to him for that. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, but that's it, an interesting perspective because I mean, it's almost like he's been invited to Secret Cinema, James Bond, yes. Casino Royale, and he's like, <laughs> "I'm just playing James Bond for the evening, so I'm gonna go. have fun with it." Seriously, I mean, there's moments when he yeah. when he walks uh, when he goes to see M at his house, and M is doing the lepidoc lepidoptery, the the butterfly collecting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and of course, and again, again, but this is a Bond. They they make it. They sort of hit you over the head right. with this is the same James Bond you know. He's super duper smart. So we every moment the caviar, the perfume, yep. the butterflies. He knows it. We okay, we got it. But he kind of walks in. Unusually small from them fellas, Polychlorus. Well, that's unusually small for. And he kind of, but sort of like he kind of smiles and puts his chest out a little bit. Like he didn't. Aren't I smart? <laughs> and I and I kind of feel like that. That sort of you know that sort well, of shows teaching, you a lot about. Weren't they teaching him acting on the fly? I mean, the, right, yeah. the director was like, all right, I won't tell your secret, and, yeah. and you stick with me, and I'll make you an actor. Right. Not, hey, an actor walked in. Right, exactly. This was a guy, you know, carrying fry chocolates, and, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the fry guy. The fry guy. Yeah. He was the fry guy. Yeah. Well, I, I will tell you, um, we, we need to talk about um, the, his look. So, yeah. Bond as a look. Um, so, I'm not going to start this one, because, mm -hmm. I, you know, I'll obviously come with a lot of jaded, you know, feelings <laughs> with this. What did you think of Bond's look in this movie? Uh, that's interesting because, um, it was okay. <laughs> I don't got a whole lot more than that. It's, I mean, he's wearing what is kind of traditional at the, I mean, this, this was the, the ruffles, you know, on the, on the shirt, on the, under, under the tux, uh, you know, something that we obviously don't do today. It was probably kind of, sh of a short lived phenomenon. Um, the, the suits are just kind of okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I, like there's nothing that he's wearing 
in this film that I walked away with, you know, except maybe for the kilt, right. that I would say, oh, that's something I would wear. Uh, he's, he's, I, there's really nothing fashion wise that jumps out of me. Even, even, boy, could you imagine trying to ski in that outfit? How could you <laughs> not freeze your stones off with it? Yeah, it was it's definitely made for fashion. So, so this will surprise you. So I, I liked his look in this movie okay. and it's not even about um so much the suits but um it was more the casual outfits mm -hmm. um like even when he comes back from golf you know that that outfit with kind of like the orange sweater and mm -hmm. the beige kind of jumper okay. but but when he's um in blofeld's lair and he wakes up and it's like it's christmas 007 yeah, yeah, yeah. um and okay. he's wearing he's wearing that shawl cardigan yeah and he's wearing kind of the true, casual yeah. pants and he's wearing the chukka boots it's like mm. That's something, if Craig was wearing today, mm. we would all own it. You'd be wearing it. I'd be wearing it. So I like that. Now, Sir Hillary Bray with the kilt, mm. you know, I think only Simon Ruzgar could get away with that. He could. Um, he does. <laughs> but but that's a disguise. Yeah. So that right. to me is Bond in disguise. Like right. Inspector, so even, yeah. you know, he's wearing, uh, when he goes for the funeral, he's wearing like in a very Italian mob outfit and everybody's like, he didn't look like Bond. Yeah, he wasn't supposed to be. Right, yeah. He was under disguise. But overall, mm. I kind of liked his look in this. I, I, you know what? And that's a, actually some very good points. I really wasn't thinking about those scenes, but you're absolutely right. There was some good ones. I'll, I'll even hand it to him for the ascot in the uh, the bull riding, <laughs> the bull fighting scene. <laughs> very appropriate. Yeah. All right, here we go. So it's, uh, it's a sign of the times. It's uh, 1960... Nine. Nine. Thank you. Well, obviously, because we're <laughs> amongst the 50th anniversary, right? Yeah. We're in it. Yeah. Um, so was there anything that smacked of you as, ooh, he couldn't do that nowadays? Um, I can't really think of much. I mean, there's, there's obviously the aspect of him essentially trying to shag as many women in, at Piz Glory as he possibly can. Uh, you know, that's probably not one that you want to sit next to your girlfriend and, and then he runs off and, and his, his, Good for him. his fiance, for is, him. his fiance is waiting for him down at a thing as he's up to doing that. Right, right. Uh, so yeah, maybe that one's a little, eh, okay. Yeah. But hey, and, and again, I have to sort of laugh and give it to George and say, not too off of the actor really. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was life imitating art, art imitating life. Exactly. There you and by go. the way, I thought um, even the uh, the relationship that he had with Tracy was mm. almost like very much um, Shakespearean of Taming of the Shrew. So if you, if you ever yeah. like understand Taming of the Shrew, it's it's that type of regiment that they need to go through. It's mm. that conflict, conflict, conflict. Wait a minute, I'm slowly starting in love. And they tried to do it. Yes. They tried to do it. I say the word try, um, <laughs> with Madeline and uh, Bond Inspector. Yes. Where it's like conflict, 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 and all of a sudden, cue uh, Sam Smith music. Da, da, da. <laughs> and I think it works much better in Honor Majesty's oh, Service. Completely. completely. And I, I actually sort of almost wish, in a way, that they kind of follow the Honor Majesty's model in that respect. Because And, and it, I don't know if you could have, so I could be talking. But yeah, the way they do it in Honor Majesty's is so good. So, yeah. And again, right from the novel. And it's interesting, too, because the novel, when you read it, uh, happens uh, toward the beginning. The It's kind of lo a lot of us under flashbacks, but they kind of do it almost. They, they sort of change it up in the film. Yes. So the, the, the timeline is a little out of whack, but the way it comes off in the film is great. Because I yeah. love the, the, the awkward introductions to her in the beginning. Uh, the way they meet and the, the, the scene in the casino is that scene in the casino. Wow, is that great? It's fantastic. It's an underrated, yeah. you know. So I, I kind of somebody. Do people understand how good this is? Because again, this is. I mean, we usually have a Bond casino scene. Right. This Standard. one is so integral to the story. Again, it's it's right from the novel. Yeah. It's it's a scene where it it, it essentially sort of it creates the relationship that he has with Tracy, where. It's an uncomfortable yes. union. Yeah, you know she's in trouble. He rescued her. She feels obligated. So it's it's an interesting dynamic to start out from. Where they go from there, you know, it, it's it's all terrific. And again, and I, you know, I'm not one for for love montages, but I think right. this one works. And I think that um, the casino scene. What I also like about it from a Bond standpoint, it shows him as this very capable entity. I mean, seamlessly, mm. he says, "Oh, maybe I, I didn't say, but you yes. know, she's she's playing with me. I forgot." Yes, that. Those smoothness yeah. of mm -hmm. Bond to handle, not just physically every situation, but verbally, yeah. is part of Bond. That's sure. why we emulate it. All right, here we go. 
But we know that Honor Majesty's Secret Service has become a classic to the standpoint of, I think, other Bond moments um, are compared. Even, you know, everybody knows that um, Leia Sadu is coming back. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, maybe they'll pull an Honor Majesty's Secret Service and kill her off. You know, it, it's used as a comparison. So, Joe Darlington of Being James Bond. Is Honor Majesty's Secret Service George Lazenby's best Bond film? Now think. Hang on, I hang do on. not want you to on. answer right uh, now. We have time. You know what? I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'll go with yes. Let's give it. Re <laughs> no, that's surprising. But yeah. Um, I didn't think so. Yeah. I, <laughs> uh, me, for me, no. No, I... Not quite. <laughs> of course it was. Yeah. It was. I mean, that's that's it. I mean, yeah. you hear, uh, if, you, if you've watched um, our vlog about George's interview at the Spy Museum... It is a bit of an atrocity because as much mm. as when the first time I saw him, I was like, that's not my bond. Mm. I think over the years, obviously, my appreciation of, appreciation of him yeah. in that role um, has absolutely grown. Mm. I think I would have liked to have seen maybe two more. You know, one of the interesting things about Honor Majesty's because it is George's one and only, you don't sit around comparing his performance here versus his performance there. True. Uh, it's almost like, think of the first time you saw Casino Royale right. before you ever heard of a quantum. Yeah. You know, you, it was a new actor who brought his own stuff and it sort of created this incredibly unique experience. Yeah. Uh, Honor Majesty's is the same way. Y you brought in a whole different actor who didn't have the baggage. I mean, people love to say, boy, wouldn't Honor Majesty's be great if Connery had done it? Uh, I don't find that. I don't I don't think so. I think the answer is clearly no. I yeah. think Connery was exhausted at that point. I think he had had enough. Uh, the performance in Diamonds shows. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't really think you would have had the same performance. The fact that they are kind of young people meeting for the first time. Again, George is, he's fresh. He's new. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, if the even if the performance is not your cup of tea, it you still have to it's. It, I think the uniqueness of it and the fact that he has a new face to you allows you to believe certain things. Right. Like if Connery walks in and now he's suddenly falling in love when he could not, he could barely muster up enough energy to, to I mean, you see the way Connery is with his women. Right. It would have been a hard sell to say, wow, now he's really in love point. for the first time. Yeah. You know, this this new James Bond, you can buy it. Right. I, I, I agree. So that is kind of the momentum. And I think, you know, one of the things that um, as we as we usher off Honor Majesty's Secret Service and look to the others, we're going to really be able to kind of measure these during time. This was a tough one because it is his one mm. and only. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And, and by the way, George, uh, George has a very funny line during that particular interview where some very young, um, unassuming uh, man in the audience asked him, hey, have you seen the Daniel Craig films? <laughs> and he goes, why? <laughs> I've, I was in the best one. Why would I watch any ones after? And he claims that he hasn't seen any Bond films after that. Yeah. So for him, it's not only the one and only he was in, it's the one and only he's seen. <laughs> yeah, I have to wonder if that's... I mean, assuming oh, yeah, he thanks. owns a television, <laughs> I, I, I'm sure he's had to have seen a couple over the years. I mean, I can't go through Thanksgiving or Christmas without a couple on the TV. So, you know... <laughs> I Who know. knows? <laughs> little, little dubious. Yeah. Well, that that's um, our overview, and um, we will return in Live and Let Die, won't we? Yes, we will. As they say. So this has been David Zaritsky. Joe Darlington. We'll see you very soon. Take care. See you then. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information, plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you, just because we know you. Talk to you soon.